Two technicians, Richard Sitterson and Steve Hadley, are preparing for an unknown operation, one of several taking place around the world, although they comment on the low success rate obtained and how dangerous it can be. Wendy Lynn reminds them of the importance of their mission's triumph. Both men prepare for their task upon learning of the failure of the operation in Stockholm, although they point out they are not worried since Japan has never failed, which almost makes the other countries a sort of redundant backup. And so it begins. Welcome to Random Recaps. In this video, I am going to recap the movie. Meanwhile, five college students from Dana, Kurt, Jules, Holden, and the drug addict Marty are going on vacation to a remote cabin in the woods owned by a cousin of Kurt. And someone says, The nest is empty. We're right on time. The technicians begin to track the young people. The kids arrive at a gas station where Holden meets a guy who gives him directions on how to get there. The college students arrive in the area, which is covered by an invisible dome. I don't like where this is going. The college students enter the cabin, and Holden takes down a painting where he can see Dana through a window. Hold up. So he switches rooms with Dana, and we realize that Richard and Steve have cameras all over the cabin to watch the kids. According to the technicians and Lee, they have been intervening in the young people's food and cosmetic products for days with substances that modify their personalities as their goal is to turn them into certain stereotypes. Jules into a dumb and promiscuous blonde, Kurt into an unintelligent athlete, Holden into an intelligent and prudent boy, Marty into a fool, and Dana into a virgin and virtuous girl, likening them to a common slasher horror movie archetype. The gas station guy calls the technicians to tell them he has done his job. Then the college students go to the lake to have fun. <laughs> Meanwhile, the technicians place bets. At night, they play music in the cabin. Marty smokes a joint and they start playing truth or dare. And Marty dares Jules to kiss the wolf on the wall. Damn, little lady. Then the technicians make the basement door open so the college students can explore the basement. Marty wants to go back upstairs, but no one listens to him. Dana finds Patience Buckner's diary and starts reading it. Marty says not to read what's in Latin, but Dana reads it anyway. Igneo animos. Upon reading it, she awakens the zombified Patience and her family. Lynn points out that each object in the basement could summon a different entity that would define the type of event the young people would have to deal with. They also mention that there are different branches around the world carrying out similar events, but all have already failed except for them and Japan, where a ghost has trapped a group of elementary school students in a classroom. After that, we see Jules dancing. Kurt takes Jules into the woods. Marty realizes everyone is acting weird. He tells Dana, but Dana doesn't believe him, thinking he's just high. Marty, I love you. You're really high. All the technicians are watching to see if Jules gets naked in the woods, but she doesn't. So Steve and Richard release pheromones to make Kurt and Jules do the dirty. Then the zombies appear to attack them. They catch them and end up killing Jules. Steve activates a machine that collects the victim's blood. Meanwhile, in the cabin, Marty hears things. And Dana and Holden are kissing. Marty goes out and realizes there are no stars. And while taking a pee, Kurt comes to tell them that Jules died. One of the zombies arrives and throws Jules' head. They lock the cabin, and Kurt has the idea to stay together. So the technicians manipulate Kurt to say they should split up. Really? And they lock them in their rooms. When Marty breaks the lamp, he realizes it had a camera. Uh oh, that's not good. Then a zombie arrives and attacks Marty. Marty punches him. But as he tries to escape, the zombie catches him and kills him. Steve activates the machine again. A zombie attacks Dana and Holden helps her. Dana finds an exit in the floor. The two get in and Dana says this dark room was in the diary she read. The zombie grabs Holden. Dana helps him by stabbing the zombie with knives. The three manage to get out of the cabin and get into the RV. Meanwhile, in Japan, they manage to defeat the ghost. Therefore, it means the Japan branch failed to kill the girls. And now they are the only ones left. You seen this? Perfect record, huh? Japan the technicians realize that those who remain are escaping, so they arrange for the tunnel to explode so they can't escape. Oh, no, no fucking Kurt way. tries to cross the precipice with his motorcycle to ask for help, but when he jumps, he crashes into a giant invisible wall. Oh well, we tried. And Dana realizes that Marty was right about something weird going on. 
After that, in the RV, a zombie kills Holden, causing them to fall into the lake. Dana manages to get out and the technicians celebrate. Daniel Truman wonders why they are celebrating if Dana is still alive. Steve says the virgin's death is optional. The first thing is for her to suffer, so they consider their work done, assuming she will die. As she emerges from the lake, we see a zombie attacking Dana while the others celebrate. Then their superior calls the technicians Turn the fucking music off. and tells them that one of the kids is still alive. Dana is about to die, but we see that Marty is still alive and helps Dana. They run toward the cabin and go into a tomb where Marty dismembered the zombie that attacked him. How to dismember that guy with a trowel. Gangster! That's gangster. And he discovered a passage to an underground base, realizing that someone sent the zombies after them. They enter the elevator and descend, there they encounter a werewolf locked in a transparent cage. Also a ghost, a girl with a mouth face, and a guy with one of the basement objects. Dana then realizes that someone is playing with them and that in the basement, they chose the monster that was related to the object. And we see a bunch of creatures in cages. The technicians try to find Dana and Marty. Wendy discovers that the marijuana immunized Marty, which is why they couldn't control him. Richard and Steve locate Dana and Marty in the cages where they send an armed squad to kill them, although Marty has to die first. A guy arrives, but due to a zombie arm, Dana and Marty manage to escape. The director tells them they shouldn't be there. She says their duty is to appease the ancients, as it is theirs to be sacrificed. The squad arrives to shoot them, so Dana comes up with the idea of releasing the creatures. Get this party started and these kill the entire squad. Another squad arrives and is also killed. The creatures initiate a massacre in the facilities that ends with the death of all the employees and one commits suicide. A creature enters where Dana and Marty are and they run away, trying to prevent the other creatures from killing them. And a unicorn kills a guy. What? Truman is killed by zombies and explodes. Hallie flies out and dies from a siren. Then Lynn dies trying to escape, and Richard is accidentally stabbed by Dana, and he says, Kill him. Both of them reach a temple under the facility and realize they will be part of a ritual. A ritual sacrifice. Then the director of the place appears. She explains to them that they were selected to be part of a sacrifice ritual where five young people represent five roles, the whore, the athlete, the scholar, the fool and the virgin to save the world from being conquered by the ancient malignant gods who once ruled the earth. They will remain sealed and asleep as long as the ritual has been carried out correctly and periodically. That makes sense to me. Marty argues that if it is necessary to torture and murder innocents to keep the world safe, perhaps it is time for a change. Dana tries to kill him to save herself, but is attacked by a werewolf before she can shoot him. Marty and the director fight for the gun. Marty shoots the wolf. The director tries to take the gun away from him. Then a zombie arrives and kills the director. Marty throws the zombie and since the ritual was not completed, the world is going to hell. Marty and Dana make peace and smoke a joint. The two hold hands as everything is destroyed and the gods awaken. And that's how the movie ends.